Great. Hi everyone, this is Charmaine and I'm the registered dietitian that helps people reverse insulin resistance and optimize insulin sensitivity. And today I have Galia here. Um, it's been a while. I'm very excited to have Galia back. Hi, Galia. Hello, it's good to be back. I'm excited to record this episode. I think it's going to be really fun and really beneficial. So yeah, super excited. Awesome, awesome. And today we really wanted to discuss about improving the quality of life with type 1 diabetes. And we have to have Galia here, of course. Um, and why do you want to talk about this, Galia? Why is this important to you? I mean, first of all, it's very personal to me, you know, as somebody who is type 1 diabetic, you know, I feel like I've lived through this myself for years. And for a long time, it felt like a very big struggle to find a balance of having a, you know, great quality of life and feeling like I could have freedom in my life, but also feeling really kind of confident and good about the level of diabetes management um, that, you know, I have. Um, and I think a lot of the time people living with type 1 diabetes tend to feel like in order to have good management, in order to have, you know, a good A1C or a good time and range, you know, they feel like they have to um, restrict themselves, give up things or make these compromises that ultimately are restrictions and, you know, make you not feel so great about your day to day. Right. And I think that is something that actually decreases quality of life and it isn't sustainable. So ideally, we want to be able to achieve a great level of diabetes management without feeling restricted, limited or like you don't have control over things um, in your life. And when you think about quality of life, you have to think about a couple of different things. It's really I like to think of it like an equation. So it's good internal health, so good diabetes management, good mental health, and a sustainable lifestyle, right? And so a lot of the times we're missing a part of that equation. And so the quality of life suffers. So if you think about having, you know, really, really tight management when it comes to your type one, but your mental health suffers, then your quality of life isn't going to be that great. Or you have really, really great diabetes management, but your lifestyle isn't sustainable, right? You're working out every day or twice a day and you're you know on a very strict ketogenic diet you're not going to be able to feel like you have a great quality of life and so this is why it's so important to talk about because this is such a chronic issue in this community and we need to talk about ways that are really realistic and sustainable when it comes to maintaining a good quality of life that being good diabetes management good mental health and a healthy lifestyle I love that. I love what you shared about making this sustainable, because I think a lot of times people are just so focused on the numbers that, you know, they'll do anything to you know, have those numbers. And I think it also goes into looking at the symptoms, you know, versus looking at the root cause. Same thing if you've, you know, watched my other content with type 2 diabetes, I always talk about that. I always talk about how in our medical world, we're so focused on the numbers, we're so focused on the symptoms, but we don't really look at what the root cause is, right? And with type 1 diabetes, a lot of times the symptom is, you know, the blood sugar, but the root cause is the knowledge on how to manage your diabetes is knowing how to bolus these foods or knowing that, okay, the problem isn't really the carbohydrates, but it's the way your body processes it. And with type one, it's, you know, kind of um, using uh, or, or learning how to use insulin to help your body process these foods, right? And so I think a lot of times you know, we just think, okay, we got to cut carbs to be able to have good blood sugar. And, you know, it happens with type one a lot, right? I see people in my comments on TikTok and they're like, well, I can't do this because I'm type one. So I have to do low carb, but no, it's not true. You can do this. You can, you know, incre increase your carbohydrate tolerance and increase your carbohydrate intake while still being able to achieve blood sugar when you know how to, you know, use insulin, when you know how to bolus these foods and also how to improve your insulin sensitivity right I don't know if you wanted to add anything on that yeah no absolutely and you know 
like you said, it's it's really sad because you see people who feel like they have to give up so many things in order to fundamentally, like it, it sounds a bit bleak, but like to feel like, okay, I, I want to stay alive, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm not going to eat any of these foods. Um, and it's just not a sustainable way to go about things, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, we wanted to kind of outline a couple of steps for you guys uh, that will help you kind of visualize how you can move towards improving your quality of life if you are type one diabetic. And so the first step, which Charmaine kind of just touched upon is filling in those knowledge gaps. So type one diabetes is a self-managed condition, right? You alone are responsible to check your, unless you're a child, you know, uh, you alone are responsible to check your blood sugar, uh, you know, calculate how much insulin you need, administer that insulin, make adjustments. and if you do not feel like the expert when it comes to doing all of this, you're going to feel like you're chasing your tail, right? It, you're essentially being set up to feel like you're failing. Um, and it's a horrible feeling. And ultimately, it's a failure of our healthcare system to provide us with all of the information and support that we need to effectively self-manage, because it's a self-managed condition, right? So if you don't know how to calculate you know how much uh, background or basal insulin you need based on your age your weight your activity level and adjust that that's a problem if you don't know how to set or change your insulin to carb ratio that's a problem if you don't know how to set your own correction factor that's going to be a problem and what happens is you have you know millions of people living with type 1 diabetes who are sitting waiting for an appointment with a nurse or a doctor for them to solve this for them when really we should be equipped to do that ourselves and so the first step is looking into okay what are the areas that i am not very confident in do i feel comfortable to do all of the things that i mentioned by myself right and if you don't feel like you can do that you know like I said, you have to start looking towards filling in those knowledge gaps because it's going to be very hard for you to have a good quality of life if you feel like you can't do those things. And the next thing that, you know, we want to look at if we're talking about improving quality of life is unlearning these kind of patterns of being afraid to eat carbs. So I'm going to hand over to Charmaine because she is all things uh, new nutrition and this is really kind of her area of expertise and I know that she you know has years of experience in this area working with people to overcome being afraid to eat carbs and improve insulin sensitivity she's she's going to give you a, a rundown on this whole area thank you Galia or you can say I'm the queen of carbs <laughs> I love it. yeah um, I'm gonna but... make you a t-shirt <laughs> oh I love that that would be great I would love that um, but, you know, the reason why I'm very passionate about unlearning carbohydrate phobia, no matter if it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes, be is because I think a lot of times carbohydrate is such a misunderstood food or, or food, not food group, because it's not itself, it's a food group. Um, it's, you know, in everything, it's in vegetables, it's in <laughs> um, legumes, it's in whole grains. But the thing with type 2 diabetes is that it's the matter of carbohydrate intolerance. It's a disease of carbohydrate intolerance. With type 2 diabetes, the reason why you can't process carbohydrate is mostly because of insulin resistance. With type 1 diabetes is because there's an absence of insulin. And so something that I really want people to understand is that once you harness the way you can help your body be better at processing carbohydrates, there's no need to cut out carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. And a lot of times it's sad to see that people don't understand this. And it goes back to the thing that I was talking about, about being uh, focused on the symptoms, right? When it comes to low carb or keto, these lifestyle are often, you know, glorified or promoted to manage blood sugars, right? And then I don't know if you've seen these videos of people like posting their CGM, even though they don't have diabetes, they post their CGMs and say, wow, like, look at this, like I have a flat line uh, blood sugar, but 
that's not really how your body's meant to be. Your body's blood sugar is not meant to be flatlining all the time, right? And this can be very restricting. It can be very unhealthy. When you cut out um, carb, when you, you know, aim to cut out carbohydrates, you're also cutting out a lot of nutrients as well. Um, the fiber and especially soluble fiber. A lot of people think, oh, well, I get, if I do low carb, if I just eat my non-starchy vegetables, I'll still have my fiber. But mostly you're getting the insoluble fiber because soluble fiber is mostly in things like oatmeal, apples, things are more starchy and you're losing out a lot of um, you know, variety when it comes to plant-based foods and it doesn't do you know, well for your gut health as well. Um, and with a low carb diet, because it's so high in fat, naturally, and not only does it increase your heart disease risk, which many of you know, with diabetes, you have a higher risk of having heart disease, um, but also because it's very high in animal protein. Um, again, I'm not saying you have to be vegan or vegetarian, but if you mainly rely on having meat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's a lot of, you know, um, animal protein that will tax on your kidney health and also can um, increase your insulin uh, resistance to even if you have type 1 diabetes insulin resistance is still a thing but with you know increasing your plant intake which um, you know is something that um, our other program coach talked about what we want to do is we want to count up instead of counting down. Now, this concept is about counting up plants instead of counting down calories. Those of you who are used to restricting carbs or restricting, you know, calories will know the counting down concept because, oh, you had an apple, now you have you know, 1100 calories left for the day. And that sucks, right? No one wants to live like that, right? We want to be actually having the mindset of abundance of knowing that you can have as you know many vegetables uh, you want and still be able to achieve optimal health and one thing with type 1 diabetes is that what you can know is what you want to do is to enhance your insulin sensitivity or to lower your insulin ratio so that you'll be able to process these carbohydrates or even you know not having to use as much insulin as before when you're able to improve your insulin sensitivity and then you can do this with a whole foods plant-based diet again you don't have to be vegan vegetarian um, to be able to do this you can really do be able to do this flexibly and also improving your insulin sensitivity will also allow you to have more flexibility in your diet where you're able to eat you know other things that you really enjoy and still be able to optimize your blood sugar levels does that make sense absolutely and to you know to add on to that like anecdotally right so me myself as somebody who is type one I used to and within the fitness community as well. I used to be so heavy on protein, 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 uh, you know, tracking macros, calorie counting. Um, and when I became plant-based, you know, before then I had okay diabetes management, but it always felt like such a, a weight. And I was, it, it took so much effort. It was physically and emotionally draining to just maintain a decent A1C. And when I started learning about plant-based eating, and it's not to say that I am strictly plant-based, I'm primarily plant-based. Um, I do eat fish every now and again. If I go out to a restaurant, you know, I, I, I might have, you know, I love cheese. Uh, I love charcuterie. So I might indulge. Um, and that's me just practicing balance. But as to say, when I went plant based, I was, I really was able to improve my insulin sensitivity drastically. The amount of insulin that I needed, my body needed to cope with the carbs that I was eating, and I was eating more carbs than I ever was, was such less insulin than I had ever used. And it felt so much easier to have a good a1c and have a good time and range it it really gave me a lot back in terms of my life in terms of like my emotional and like physical energy that i would use to look after myself i got so much back and that really did help me personally have a better quality of life because diabetes wasn't always on my mind you know it wasn't this stress or this constant anxiety about what am i going to eat how am I going to do this? You know, how am I going to keep my blood sugars down? Um, 
And, you know, to kind of uh, tie things in, so we've talked about, you know, three steps. So Charmaine just covered the second and we're going to go into the third, which is making these kind of changes, right, about filling in these knowledge gaps and, uh, you know, unlearning uh, carbophobia and learning to improve insulin se sensitivity, how to really make this lifelong, because I know that it can uh, be a challenge to even though you can see that something works well and it makes sense and you feel good sometimes it can be hard to you know maintain a certain kind of lifestyle uh, long term but yeah. what we really want to talk about is learning to have that balance and learning to have that flexibility and that you know compassion and kindness towards yourself mm -hmm. in those moments um, because nobody's perfect and expecting yourself to be 100% of something all the time is extremely unrealistic. And I mean, some people can do it really dependent on a person's personality. But for most people, it's not a realistic, uh, you know, expectation to say, I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z all the time. It gives you no wiggle room. And so something that we really believe in is if you like Charmaine said, work to improve, you know, your insulin sensitivity, your carbohydrate tolerance. If you learn how to feel really confident in your self-management and adjusting your insulin, uh, you know, requirements, your needs, um, your presets, all of that, um, you know, if you if you're able to do all of that, then you can actually have wiggle room, right? You can go and have a nice birthday dinner or go out with friends, you know, on the weekend and have a good time and not stress out because what you do and your lifestyle is so reliable that you have that wiggle room to, you know, have a little breath every now and again, if you would like to. Um, and I think, Sorry, Charmaine, do you want to add anything? I know I'm talking. No, about no, I, I think one thing that, well, first of all, I love that you, the way you say plant based, because a lot of times I say plant based with like a British accent. People are like, <laughs> you're saying pot based. I'm like, no, I'm saying plant based. I just don't say like plant based. But anyway, so I love that, you know, you say, you know, the same thing here. But I love what you said about when you get back that energy, you're getting so much more of your life back. And I feel like that's actually something that I really want to talk about this month or focus on educating people is the energy that you're getting and the flexibility. And it's about getting your life back. So I just really love that. That's the only thing that I wanted to add is that I feel like when you're able to have energy able to do so much more so it's really more than just about managing that your blood sugar it's really about getting your life back it's really about get you know living life to the full so anyways that's why um, I really wanted to just highlight that point because I think people don't really understand how much of an impact this can bring you and how this can literally transform your life um, as well so I wanted to add yeah. that mm -hmm. no thank you for highlighting that and I I definitely agree I think it's that's so huge. And I don't think you realize how big that is until it happens to you or you go mm -hmm. through that or you see someone close to you, you know, go through that. Mm -hmm. Um because any chronic condition is difficult that you have mm -hmm. good days you have your bad days it's inevitable mm -hmm. right um but any changes that you can make and even though making changes to your lifestyle you know like I said filling in those knowledge gaps learning about insulin sensitivity and how to improve that even though that might take some energy from you at first and that seems like something that's difficult right to go through saying oh I'm gonna make these changes what you get back is so much more than mm -hmm. what you put in right mm -hmm. like the, the amount of your life right that you can reclaim there's there's nothing better than that mm -hmm. you know and I was actually talking about this with my husband like two days ago mm -hmm. um I said to him you know I just want to be able to enjoy the things that matter most to me in mm. my life. I want to be able to enjoy my family, our dogs, my relationship, you know, exploring uh, the world. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to really enjoy that to its fullest and not feel like I constantly have diabetes on my mind. Mm -hmm. Whatever I can do to have that, I am so happy to do it because at the end of the day, that the enjoyment of actually living 
is so much more to me than, you know, sitting and, and eating a pizza, you know, mm -hmm. by myself, um, which I used to do <laughs> a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, like uh, struggling with, you know, food or emotion emotional eating or being self-obsessed mm -hmm. about my appearance and how much muscle I had or how how lean I was you know mm -hmm. that was not me living actually living my mm -hmm. life um and so I think focusing on that like focusing yeah. on what are the experiences in my life that matter most to me like is it mm -hmm. my family like being there for my family is it being able to travel and, and do whatever and as mm -hmm. long as that's at the forefront like and you focus on that it isn't so hard to make these changes and mm -hmm. to go about it because that's what you're gonna get back right mm -hmm. that's what you get in return and I mean to me personally like there's nothing that is more important than that yeah I love what you just shared and I think this even goes into oops <laughs> sorry uh, this even goes into what we talk about in you know, when it comes to mind food versus physical foods, right? I love that you shared. It's about, you know, spending time with your family about what, you know, really matters. And I hear, I heard this from another health coach, but, you know, she talked about how there's primary foods and there's secondary foods, right? Secondary foods are, you know, either foods that we eat um, physically and also something that we, you know, it just, fills us up like temporarily right but with primary foods or mind foods it's something that is what really fuels you and I feel like it's something that we really want to also emphasize to people as well that this is also like I said it's about enjoying life and you know really focusing on what really matters um, and not just you know your your physique or not just about the blood sugar and not about eating perfectly but it's really about you know en enjoying what will actually last will actually you know fill your soul up if that makes sense so I love that you shared that absolutely and you know talking about like our final step in making these changes lifelong so you can improve your quality of life so much of this whole process is about mindset right mm -hmm. and and like we were just saying you know focusing on these things that matter most to you um instead of focusing on things that actually take you away from the most important things in in your life or in in your world um and I think and like I said, any chronic condition has its difficulties and there are naturally going to be good days and days that are a bit harder. Mm -hmm. And I think something that we collectively need to get better at when we're talking about improving quality of life is learning to process our individual emotions about mm -hmm. having a chronic health condition in a more constructive way. And part of that is mindset. It's your outlook. Um, so being pro active about wanting to feel good and wanting to have the best life possible uh you know going through whatever feelings it is that you're having so if you're having a hard day or you're struggling with something not pushing that deep inside of you so that it explodes you know mm -hmm. two weeks later and then you're non-functional mm -hmm. but giving yourself that permission and to say you know what it's okay if there are some days that are harder I'm human mm -hmm. even if I have a chronic health condition there are going to be some days where I just feel low and things mm -hmm. are tough and it's even harder when you have an extra layer of having to manage a health condition. So giving yourself that self, like that permission and being kind to yourself in the process. I think that's something that collectively the type one community, I think it's gotten better, but I think it's something that people still really, really struggle with. Um, so for me, I would always advise people to sit with their feelings, you know, journal, have a healthy outlet for whatever your thoughts are, look for support like the type one community can be so supportive especially on places like instagram mm -hmm. you know there are most people have a specialized dedicated type one account where they mm -hmm. document their lives and the community is so uplifting mm -hmm. and supportive and it's so important to have people around you who understand the individual struggles that come with yeah. going through this and mm -hmm. um, i think when you have that support network of people mm -hmm. who get it uh, your day-to-day -day life becomes easier it's mm -hmm. easier to go about your day-to-day -day because you know that there are people in your corner who are going to be there mm -hmm. for you no matter what and who understand 
you know the kind of little frustrations that yeah. come you know with with all of this mm-hmm. um yeah yeah and you know I thought about one thing as you know you're sharing but one of the things that I actually want to ask you about is how do you deal with the ebbs and flows with type 1 diabetes because you know not every day is perfect same with you know anything in life right there's always ebbs and flows there's always you know great days there's days that's like all right tomorrow will be a better day (laughs) you know so how do you deal with that ebbs and flows and I love that way you shared about a community but if you can just kind of you know encourage people that are listening if they're kind of going through it how do you deal with ebbs and flows yeah uh like first thing I do is Like I said, like I just give myself the permission to feel whatever feeling I'm feeling. So if Mm -hmm. I'm feeling angry about like my reality or if I'm feeling frustrated or Mm -hmm. agitated, you know, I need to give myself that permission to go through those feelings. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think that acceptance of a chronic health condition is okay. I accepted it like I'm good, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, but it isn't perfect like that and you can backtrack right and that's okay that's actually normal and healthy um Mm -hmm. you might have periods of time in your life where you struggle with the reality that you have a chronic health condition that you are type 1 diabetic maybe you're comparing yourself to people around you that aren't you know a type 1 Mm -hmm. diabetic and I always say there's a certain element of uh grief when Mm -hmm. you get diagnosed with a chronic health condition and that can also come back just like if you lost a person in your life um Mm -hmm. maybe it gets maybe you're more able to cope with the pain Mm -hmm. as time goes past but it can still be there and there are moments where you can really feel that pain and it's the same with you know with your health right you can have moments where you do struggle to cope with that and that's okay it's normal Mm -hmm. You have to give yourself that permission to go through those feelings, to process those feelings. And Mm -hmm. what I like to do is if I'm having a tough day, so say, I don't know, I've had a bad day and like things aren't going well and diabetes adds like an extra layer of of stress. Mm -hmm. I'll give myself, okay, I'm going to sit for, you know, an hour and I'm going to do something that like feeds my soul, something that makes me happy or makes me feel good or helps me relax or feel Mm -hmm. grounded. That could be like sitting with my dogs and and petting them or going for a walk outside, journaling and like offloading like all of the crazy things that might be going in through my mind. Mm -hmm. It might be watching an episode of, you know, crashy reality TV because it makes me laugh. (laughs) Um, But I think just giving yourself that time to just sit with those feelings Mm -hmm. and then, you know, kind of just get through them. So I would say that first of all, Mm -hmm. second thing I would do if someone is going through a tough time is have an honest conversation with yourself about like what is the issue that Mm -hmm. like you're having is it like just on an emotional level is it just struggling with you know the acceptance of Mm -hmm. the reality of having a health condition is it a, a problem in terms of your numbers And if it's a problem in terms of your numbers, look into what might be causing that. Because even though diabetes can be quite complex in the sense that hormones, sleep, stress, that can all affect your blood sugar, there's also a lot that we can control. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do is to focus on the things that I can control Mm -hmm. as opposed to the things I cannot. So if it's hormonal, if it's lack of sleep uh, for a particular reason, I can't control that. I'm not going to get upset about that because it just is what it is. And if we allow ourselves to get upset about that, it's just going to be very frustrating and you're going to be hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. So instead, focus on what you can control. And the things that we can control are things like, are our insulin needs being met? Are they mismatched? Mm -hmm. Uh, Is my blood sugar high because I made an error in terms of carb counting or something Mm -hmm. like that? You know, Sometimes, you know, honest mistakes do happen. I make mm-hmm. mistakes now and again as well. It's totally normal. But is it a recurring issue? You know, mm-hmm. is it that you're not feeling confident in this area? Mm-hmm. And then make sure that you can get the right support to solve these problems. Because 
if we're going to go through this for the rest of our lives, we owe it to ourselves to equip ourselves with everything that we need to be able to have the best life possible mm. and to be able to do this confidently so that we can get that freedom and flexibility back. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say just going through the feelings mm-hmm. uh, community, like I said before. So I have, uh, you know, a group of uh, like dire buddies online. I've never met them in person, mm-hmm. but these ladies like know my deepest, darkest secrets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing to yeah. be able to connect with people on such a deep basis through this shared mm-hmm. experience but we've never met we don't know each other we might live on opposite sides of you know the earth mm-hmm. um we're there for each other and it's mm-hmm. truly felt so community processing those feelings giving yourself that permission to feel whatever it is mm-hmm. that you're feeling and having those real but sometimes difficult conversations with yourself about mm-hmm. um, i holding myself back from mm-hmm. living my best is it because I'm not confident in a certain area? And what can I do to improve this? And then setting out an action plan or getting help to, you know, fix those problems. So it's not recurring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love everything that you shared. And I think also understanding that there are things that you can control and there are things that you just can't control. And, you know, to not have to stress over that because I think a lot of times people feel like, they are a failure if they can't control things that they can't control if that makes sense um so I really love that yeah I think it's it's really difficult and I mean I I know that you probably also see this with people with type 2 but because Mm -hmm. you check your blood sugar and you see this static number Mm -hmm. it can feel you know a bit overwhelming at times especially if it's because of something that you can't control like say someone is Mm -hmm. on a standard medication or they slept two hours last night or Mm -hmm. you know their uh, hormones are you know kind of out of whack Mm -hmm. if you test your blood sugar and you see your sugars are super super high you know you you feel like it's your report card you feel like okay well I'm 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 doing something wrong right Mm -hmm. and so that can be really really challenging but like you said just reminding yourself okay there are certain things that aren't in my control I'm Mm -hmm. gonna try to not focus on them it might be hard but let me reroute my focus to what I can control Mm -hmm. I always tell people if you're having high sugars if you're having a bad day maybe don't check your sugars as much Mm because the the feelings of being discouraged might be more detrimental to you and your Mm -hmm. well-being checking every you know hour or or two hours drink some water have a self-care day go Mm -hmm. for a walk you know check a little less frequently mm-hmm. and you know, re reassess tomorrow mm-hmm. um but I think you know just practicing these small uh, like behavioral changes mm-hmm. everything seems small but when you add them all together you really do improve like how you feel and how you cope with the kind of natural ups and downs of mm-hmm. being diabetic yeah I love that I love what you just shared and just understanding that all right there's ebbs and flows there's things that you can or cannot control and and just you know and I think to redirect your your direction to something else I think that also helps too sometimes when we're just so focused on one thing it you know it doesn't help with our stress and then doesn't help with you know what we're trying to achieve anyways and so I think sometimes a more not like a loose approach but a more like healthy approach where there's balance is actually something that helps you you know even just not only having better blood sugar outcomes but even you know better mental health as well so yeah thank you so much for sharing is there anything else you want to add no I feel like that's every I mean I could talk about this kind of stuff forever (laughs) I'm not gonna lie um but I feel like we covered you know, some really good bits. And like we said, we're just talking about improving, you know, quality of life and Mm -hmm. how to improve your care on an emotional level, but also logistically, like, what is it that you can do, right? So we Mm -hmm. said, you know, about filling in those knowledge gaps, asking Mm -hmm. yourself those hard questions, looking at improving insulin sensitivity, which makes management easier. And then just looking after yourself on an emotional basis, because that's usually what holds people back Mm -hmm. from, adopting something lifelong is how is this actually affecting me and how am I coping with the difficulties of you know what I go through so Mm -hmm. I feel like we've had a great you know conversation today yeah 
a great one to come back to. <laughs> yes, I love that. And, you know, for those of you who are listening and if you want help with type 1 diabetes, I really want to introduce you to our new program that focuses on helping people with type 1 diabetes, which I'm so excited about because for the past three years, we've been helping people with type 2 diabetes and some people with type 1, but I really wanted to you know, come together with Galia and to create this type one program that helps you learn how to not just manage your blood sugars, not just to manage your insulin, but also learn how to, you know, address type one diabetes in a healthy way, both, you know, physically and also mentally, and also will cover nutrition as well. So this is a very um, well-rounded one-stop shop program that we want to offer you. So if you're interested and if you are also interested in learning what we do or how we help people with type 1 diabetes manage their blood sugar so that they can feel in control with type 2 di- uh, type 1 diabetes and not being able to uh, not being in burnout, that's something that we want you to um, check out our free training. Our free training is in our show notes as well. And in our free training, we're going to break down the steps on how we help you to avoid burnout. We help you on how to uh, make sure that you're able to manage your type 1 diabetes very effectively and fill in all the knowledge gaps. So make sure you go check out our free training link is in our show notes or in our description and I'll see you guys there. Have a wonderful day.